Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to quickly show you how to create an assignment in Blackboard and how to create a corresponding rubric for that assignment. First thing that you need to do is you need to find uh, where you put your assignments. So normally I put mine in a separate assignments and test folder here. So I'm going to go into my course assignments. Uh, sometimes you can create an assignment uh, in an actual week or in an actual module. It doesn't matter uh, where you decide to put it as long as your students know. Um, then once I get into where I'm putting my assignment, I click down on the assessments drop down menu and you can create any type of assignments, a survey, a test, a turn it in assignment. In this case, I'm just going to create a regular old assignment. I click on that. Now I give my assignment a name and possible color if I want. I'm just going to call it assignment 3, let's call it. And here's the box where you can put the instructions or description of the assignment if you want. Normally what I'll do is I'll just have uh, a separate Word or PDF file that has all the instructions for the students and I'll just attach it. But if you want to put it in that box up there, you can as well. In this case, I'm just going to attach my assignments and I'll tell my students to see the attachment or whatever you want to say there. And next, you have to determine how many points is possible in the grading section. So in this one, it's worth 20%. Usually my percentages and my points match up, so I'm going to say that this is worth possible 20 points for my students. We'll come back to the rubric section. Then you can determine the availability. So I'm going to make this assignment available right away. I'm only going to allow a single attempt. I'm not going to determine the limit availability. I'm just going to say that it's uh, available all the time and I'm going to track the number of views because I want to see who's actually accessing this assignment. You can change any of these depending on uh, your wants. You could also create a, a due date if you wanted to. I'm going to leave that blank. You can make it available to groups of students or to all students individually. So I'll leave it like that. Uh, the next step is to create a rubric. So we go back up to the grading section. And you could select a, an existing rubric, or you could modify an existing rubric, or you can create a new rubric. I'm going to select create a new rubric, and I'm going to give my rubric a name. So I'll call it rubric 3. And you can put a description, whatever you want. Uh, and the meat and potatoes of this, meat and potatoes of this, is the actual criteria and the levels of achievement. So you can change these. It comes. Uh, templated with these uh, ones along the left and these levels of achievement. Uh, so you can change these depending on how you set up your rubrics. So if I want to change the name of this one, I can call it Formatting and APA. If I want to change this one, I could call it Organization and Structure, however you want to change it. I could also change these as well if I don't want to call it Novice. If I want to call it Level 1, I can call it Level 1 change this one to level four if I wanted to. I'll call it level three. Uh, and then you can also add rows and add columns as well. So if you have more criteria or more levels of achievement, you can add those. So let's say I have more criteria that I'm marking on. So it's added a new row and I can change that. And my other criteria is communication. So I'll save the new row as communication. And I also usually have four levels of achievement. So I can add an extra column and create a new level of achievement, and I'll call this level four. So now I've got the appropriate number of boxes, levels of achievement, and criteria. I go to my rubric that I've already made already in the Word document, and now it's just a matter of copying and pasting all the different boxes into the corresponding boxes here. So paste that in. We'll find my level three for this section. Paste that in the corresponding box. And just fill those all out until you've populated all the areas for your regular rubric. The next thing you have to worry about is the rubric type. So you can make a percentage, point range, point, percentage range. I usually do a point range, so I'm going to select a point range. And remember that in your assignment instructions here, I've said that it's worth 20 possible points, so my rubric has to match those 20 possible points. So the most that they could get in this section is 20 points. 20 points divided by four different criteria is five for each different criteria. So I'm going to fill in those as five, and that'll equal 20. So the most possible points that they can get is 20. Um, and once I'm done that, I'm going to save my assignments, submit it once everything is populated. That'll add the rubric. I'm ready to submit my assignments. And the good thing about this is it's going to automatically create a, a mark in the grade center as well. So it's going to automatically put that in there when you use your when you create.